realize how the sourcing of essential commodities needed for production of renewable energies absolutely does harm the environment. There's an overuse of land, it wastes fresh water and contaminated, disturbs the wildlife, and emits toxic substances such as hydrogen sulfides to the atmosphere. In addition, most renewable energies, as uh, the positive team said, renewable energies still do, do, do still harm the environment and contaminate it. And if we stopped to use, if we didn't use fossil fuels and we only use fossil fuel, uh, we only use renewable energies, then we will still face the same problem. But we only have a little more time to face the inevitable. So, although it might appear to be a viable solution for environmental problems, <coughs> renewable energy is not the answer that we are looking for to reduce the, our carbon footprint and to protect our planet. Thank you to the opposing team and to the judges for giving us this great opportunity. My team and I are convinced that renewable energies are not the way to face this problem and that they do harm the environment. Thank you very much. We have presented you with the facts of our dying planet. We have laid out the definitions and examples for you, plenty to prove our case. From my standpoint, I believe it would not only be foolish, but ignorant to ignore the science behind the benefits of renewable energy. Labeling the sourcing as harm would be wrong. It will take hard work and sacrifices. We're not denying that, but the change it is capable of making is extraordinary. Turning a blind eye to this potential is pathetic. It's sad. I actually pity those of you that believe we should continue living in our selfish, egotistical ways thinking horrible repercussions won't immediately follow. The manufacture and sourcing of the commodities is just a small surrender in the fight for our natural world. Over 10 million people have died from droughts since climate change has become an immediate danger. As, um, as another famous activist has said, this ongoing irresponsible behavior will no this, uh, sorry, this is the wrong quote. Another famous activist said, to anyone who continues to deny the reality of climate change, I dare you to get off of your ivory tower and away from the comfort of your armchair. This was said at a 2014 UN Climate Summit. And do these facts and these quotes bother you? Do they make you uncomfortable? Then the only solution is our future, our renewable energy. If you don't do it for yourself, do it for your children, our generation, us, the future. Thank you. and I'll be proving to you that the sourcing for a lot of these essential commodities do not harm our environment. My opposing team has argued that the sourcing for the essential commodity for wind turbines, the clearing of land, harm our environment. But what if I told you that land was inevitably going to be cleared? Backed up by my geography textbooks in my GCSE course, the information in front of you, the pie chart, was provided by Pearson Key Stage 4 Geography course. It shows us that 80% of deforestation is caused by cattle ranching, 20% for commercial agriculture, and 5% for small scale agriculture, and 3% for logging. Only 2% is made up of other small negligible activities. That land was always going to be cut down, one way or another. That is the reality of our materialistic world. So why not utilize the already damaged land for wind turbines? It only makes sense, right? We are merely utilizing our resources. That land was not cleared for the wind turbines. So the sourcing of this commodity, the land, was not cleared for the wind turbines. So the argument that the sourcing was Yes. Uh, do you have any statistics that prove that? Well, you said that there some land that has already been was already like dead. Um, now, how is that like? Are there any statistics that prove how much percent of lands? So, which kind of lands? So, how many lands are like um, 
already dead and how many aren't? No, I do not have the statistic to prove that, but this is, uh, the rock was the rate for deforestation, so it's more like the land that was cleared. Anyways, so there may be land that needs to be cleared already, but we want to preserve that. <coughs> so the argument that the sourcing for the essential commodity needed for the production of this renewable energy harms the environment does not apply in this case. Now, let's think of another commodity, water. My team has also argued that hydroelectric power pollutes our waters and is bad for our rivers. However, this is not what we are talking about again. Dams are not a commodity. You cannot sell them for profit. We are strictly talking about the commodity needed for hydroelectric power, which in this case would be the water alone. And the sourcing for this is completely and utterly harmless in of itself. People often forget we live in a modern society with very modern solutions. Although our technology may not be perfect and we have a long way to meet our 100% sustainable desire, but we have made progress. As of today, the official European Union Commission states that over 95% of solar panels materials are completely utterly recycled. In Spain, from, according to a study from 2017, our solar panels were attained from 94, uh, 94 tons of, of glass, 15 tons of metal, and 2.5 tons of plastic. Yeah, the land used for, so, for building solar panels are used instead for crops that we need in Spain. I, there are lots of solar panel farms, and solar panels are also used for on houses and a lot of people find ways to put them in places that does not take up land. So we could think of maybe more solutions. And according to a study from 2020, that year 5,000 tons of solar panels were manufactured from 94.7% recycled materials. This comes to show that no harm is being done. <coughs> so please check your facts, question the obvious, don't just believe everything you read, as the source of the information defines the reliability of the facts. The motion is a statement, but is it a fact? How do you know this so-called fact is telling the truth? So think twice about the motion, as the source matters. Good morning, judges. Timekeeper, the most of the opposite team and distinguished guests. Today we're here to debate the motion. The sourcing of essential commodities needed for the production of renewable energy homes and farms. My team and I are going to be arguing against the motion. I, Laura Yambat, will be mainly establishing our response to the motion and explaining how we cannot be 100% sustainable. The second speaker, Sofia Balo will be giving crucial examples on commodities that do not harm the environment. And our final speaker, Leila Rabido, will be explaining how overall this is going to help our future. The motion we are debating simply says that the sourcing of absolutely necessary raw materials required for the production of renewable energy harms the environment. Our response to these motions our response to this motion is that basically labeling the sourcing as harm would be wrong. You could be tempted it harms to say it harms the, the environment, but does it really? Labeling it as harm would be wrong since it's a minor sacrifice to save our existence, our species, our planet. Let me give you an example. Imagine someone that has a spreading bacterial infection on their toe, and that has to be amputated to save that patient's life. Would you call the process of amputation as harm, or would you focus on the fact that someone's life has been saved, for which a necessary procedure took place? So how can we say the sourcing of essential commodities harms the environment? 
At the end, some trees may be coming down, some carbon dioxide may be released, but it will all be worth it. This analogy is what we think about the planet. A necessary procedure has to take place in order to save us. We currently do not have the capacity to be 100% sustainable. The only way we found to be able to sustain our lifestyles to the maximum is by making a use of fossil fuels. But when we realized how extremely damaging that was, we tried to find solutions. One of them was renewable energy. And yes, renewable energy is still far from where we want it to be. However, we are working towards becoming able to rely on renewable energy. It would be wrong of us to just accept the fact that we are back for the environment and continue to live the way we're doing so. We as humans are triggered by ambition and right now our main focus is to become sustainable. Also, is it what we're doing with renewable energy better than nothing? Considering that we are based on fossil fuels, the number one cause of the greenhouse effect and global warming. What we are doing with renewable energy is extremely a good thing and a success and is way better than fossil fuels. We are going against the clock. We do not have much time left in this earth if we continue the way we're doing so. We do not have the capacity to become 100% sustainable in the space of 10 years. However, something that we can do is become less damaging to the earth. And yes, we currently have not gotten all the tools we need. But this is more of an achievable and realistic goal, rather than waiting for that perfect solution that will sadly not come in the space of, ti of time we need. This has to happen now. We have to make changes. And renewable energy is going to be our solution. It's something that's still far for, from where it has to be. But we are working towards it. Let's focus on the now and work with what we can work with. Thank you. Mining produces over 100 billion tons of waste annually. Yes, you heard me right. 100 billion tons of waste. Now, you might be asking, what does mining have to do with renewable energies? Well, considering minerals are one of the essential materials needed to produce renewable energies, this fact is quite concerning, to say the least. We need copious amounts of aluminium to produce solar panels, zinc for electrolyzers to produce hydrogen energy, and especially vast amounts of copper to expand grid lines to transport all this energy created by renewable energies. The sourcing of minerals is just as harming to the environment as fossil fuels are, if not more. Mining involves making pits in the ground and extracting all the minerals from there. And the digging itself is already extremely harmful to the environment, since it disrupts all the species living there and destroys their habitat. However, the worst part for sure is the waste. The 100 billion tons of waste put in tailing, tailing dams. Now, I'm well aware you probably don't know what tailing dams are, which makes sense since they want you to believe that renewable energies are 100% clean, with no side effects, no waste. That sadly just isn't true. Tailing dams are giant artificial containers, as big as lakes where they keep all this mining waste. All this mining waste in the form of mud, which is toxic, radioactive, and can even contain mercury or arsenic. These tailing dams are made out of weak materials that often leak and spreads the mud over hundreds of kilometers, destroying wildlife, animals, and more. The last tailing dam was just over to, the last tailing dam leak. It was just over two weeks ago on the 7th of November, where a 150 meter breach in a tailing dam in Tanzania spread over eight kilometers mud, toxic mud. It destroyed wildlife, animals, and they even got into water sources, destroying even more animals um, and also making local communities who use that as drinking water sick. There's over 18,000 tailing dams all over the world, containing 100 billion um, tons of waste. 
What's stopping this from happening again? How is it not going to happen over and over again? We just do not have the technologies or the sources to mint mine in a viable way. <clears throat> to achieve net zero emissions globally by 2050, like the governments are promising us, we, need to, we would have to duplicate the mineral input by six times. Six times the amounts of waste. 600 billion tons of waste by 2050. We just do not have the technology to be able to do this sort of risk in a way that won't impact or harm the environment in any way. Another essential commodity that harms the, um, the environment tremendously is the sourcing of land, wind turbines. Wind turbines need vast amounts of space because they need um, to rotate their massive turbines. And the land they do this on <clears throat> contains species, birds, bats, who are all affected. Birds and bats mainly, since they die to collisions with wind turbines, caused by the pressure of the ro rotating wind turbines. <clears throat> now, you may, <clears throat> the, wind, the US Fish and Wildlife Service estimates that 500 million birds are killed by wind turbine collisions annually in the US alone. 500 million. And it's not even the worst part, the noise pollution. That's the real silent killer. Because it, it makes birds deaf. It hinders communication between them. And if there's no communication, they can't mate. So reproduction rates fall. Hundreds of bird species are slowly and quietly disappearing due to this. As you can see, minerals and lands are commodities that are essential to the production of renewable energies. And we can just, we do just not have the technology to source them resourcefully without impacting the environment. They cause <coughs> biodiversity loss, spread of toxic waste. So it really begs the question, are we really not just switching out one evil for another? Thank you. When you're delivering this sort of thing to an audience, we think that clarity is, is all, really. Um, and on that basis, I think we felt that the team that came across on all points um, and very clearly, and therefore wins this, this debate, is Mallorca International School.